Hello and welcome to our latest science video roundup. I'm Katrine Brahick and I'm going to take you through this week's best videos. If you've ever had an old pair of shoes that you've wished could fix themselves, a new type of rubber just might do the trick. Researchers from the Industrial Physics and Chemistry Higher Educational Institution in Paris have created a new type of self-healing rubber. Here, they cut a piece of it to demonstrate how it works. When they gently reconnect the two pieces and leave them together for an hour, they meshed back just like new. Stretching out the sample shows just how strong the new joint actually is. The material is made from fatty acids and urea and is able to self-heal due to the hydrogen bonds between its molecules. In regular rubber, there are three types of bonds connecting molecules, and two of them are not able to reform once they're broken apart. Rubber may now be able to heal itself, but for the oceans, it's a different matter. Speaking at the AAAS meeting in Boston last week, Ben Halpern presented a new map which shows just how great an impact humans have had on seas around the world. And you can see when looking at the map uh, that there's no single spot on the planet that's been untouched by human activities. And this is remarkable because it's such a vast space and yet we've gotten to every single corner of it. It represents the overlay of 17 different factors from climate change to overfishing and their impact on marine ecosystems. Warm colors depict the regions that are most affected, with the worst areas colored in red. The data came from various sources, including the UN and GPS tracking of commercial fishing boats. Halpin hopes the map will have many uses. It really is uh, a foundation upon which people can build all sorts of potential conservation and management efforts, as well as education efforts. And finally, some video that gives fresh insight into the origins of flight. Some scientists believe that birds evolved the ability to fly by falling from trees and cliffs, whereas others claim they learned to fly by taking off from the ground. Researchers from the University of Montana have analyzed these two scenarios by filming chucker birds and carefully tracing the motion of their wings both during level flight and as they ran up a slope. At first glance, the wings appear to be moving in very different ways. But when the researchers analyzed them relative to the ground, they found the motions were in fact very similar. This seems to show that the ancestor of modern day birds would have learnt to fly in the same way, regardless of whether they fell or took off like a jumbo jet. And that's all for now, but for more science and technology, check out the website or read the magazine. See you next week.